Hello everyone, I'm going to do something today I've always wanted to do and that is to record and video uh, a recording session of recording of a song from the beginning to the end. And that's what I'm, I'm going to do today so you'll be able to see the whole aspect of how I do everything and how I put it all together. I'm going to be doing a song uh, by Amos Badger uh, from Canada, uh, just an awesome singer and uh, anointed singer. Uh, but uh, I'm going to, he sent me a song, he sends his songs, uh, uh, guitar on the left and vocal on the right, uh, and I bring it into the computer and I, uh, then I added all the instruments. So that's what I'm going to start to do first. So I've got the project loaded up. Uh, I determined the tempo to be about 122.5. Um, uh, so I'm going to drag that in. I've got a, um, uh, I've got a transfer, uh, a transfer channel. Uh, that, that's what I call it. Uh, but I pull it in there and I take off the the, the snapping tool and I try to line it up with the beat and we'll see how that works. Okay, so I think that's uh, synced up right. I'm gonna go to the end and see if it's still synced up. Okay, it's all synced up. I think that's about right. I'm gonna turn the snap back on and drag it over to the beginning. Now, one thing I like about, I record in Luna. Uh, I used uh, Logic for a long time, but uh, now I'm using Luna uh, exclusively for all the projects and it just got some uh, awesome uh, features uh, in the way it does things and the sound that I get out of it. I'll, I'll show you a little bit more uh, a little bit later as I go. So I've got this uh, track pulled in. Uh, you can see now I'm gonna go up to the uh, track and I'm gonna convert it to, um, to a mono. So I'm gonna split that 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 stereo track so now it's split it in two uh now uh this is the the uh, acoustic guitar which he recorded with a piezo and i'm going to pull it down into this um acoustic track that i've uh, i got set up all uh, that i use all the time and this has got an acoustic ir so it's going to make it sound more like a mic than a piezo so take a listen to that Add it to the left a little bit. And then I'm gonna drag this vocal down to this vocal track that I that I have. Okay, now one of the things that I, I do right away is to roll off the uh, roll off the low end. And that's what I like about this uh, about the Luna uh, console is that it's a record it's just like a rec uh, recording console so i'm going to take the roll off and roll almost everything i do i roll off uh down to 250. okay now i'm going to take a listen to that i'm going to put a compressor on it Solo that acoustic for a little bit. Just gonna brighten it up just a little bit, about 10k. And just a little bit about the impulse thing. It's got an IR. Here's without it. See, that's the piezo. Now I turn it on. A little more acoustic sounding. Okay, now I'll pull that to get back. down just a little bit Sin is defeated, gone. and I do the same thing with the um, vocal I roll it off about 250 I'm gonna hit the compressor again on there Gonna really uh, set the EQ until uh, tell that towards the end and see how it fits in because sometimes you brighten it up too much and after the mastering, uh, then it's then it uh, gets it too bright. So I'm gonna leave that for now. Uh, Acoustic's probably gonna say the same. So I pan that to the left because I'm going to um, probably do some piano uh, 
stuff and put that pan that to the right. So uh, now I'm gonna put the base on. Ah. What I've got is um, I'm using is a, a Epiphone uh, viola. It's kind of a uh, it's designed after the. designed after the Hofner. Uh, it's kind of a shorter scale bass, uh, but I... Okay, uh, so now I'm gonna put the bass line on. the intro this chords now all the songs when he sent them um this is how i record i don't uh rehearse the songs at all i don't um you know go through them and, and, and chart it out or anything uh i just you know just as i go i learn it and put it together so this one I think I'm gonna. I've got to put a pre-roll in here. I'll do that by one measure, so it gives me that before before I start. Okay, I'm gonna do it like that at the beginning. You know, so I, I did a little bit more simpler at the beginning, uh, now then more rhythmic when the chorus came in.
I guess that's the course again. So it looks like, oh yeah, looks like it's gonna end with that chorus. Okay, so I'm gonna come back in right there on the chorus, even a little bit more active. Uh, I'm gonna turn his vocal up just a little bit so I can hear it get a little bit more. Okay. lucky there that I he uh, he ended on that four okay got that uh, not, not, what th uh, one of the things that I like about the Luna uh, project is I can quantize um, the audio so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the, the whole bass line and select the whole thing and quantize, and quantize it to eight now you can see it moved a little bit, it changed a little bit, put everything right on the beat. Um, right there, just like, just like you treat it just like MIDI. Here I can even do that. I can increase the volume of the track. Okay, because there are some quiet parts that kind of didn't come out. So now that, that compressor brings that um, back up. Uh, now I think what I'm going to do, I think that's it for the for the bass. Uh, how I record the bass is I put it through the um, uh, Universal Audio uh, tube preamp. Then it goes into the uh, 1176, an actual 1176. It's not a plugin. I try to use outboard gear as much as I can uh, uh, instead of the software. So that's what I did. So then it goes, it's, so it's compressed already, goes into that. And then uh, once it's in there, um, then, I, then I, it, I add the, uh, I'm going to play a little bit because this is the MPEG uh, simulation. There's another thing I'll show you real quick is that this this whole system, um, every track there's a uh, there's a tape tape simulation on it. So every channel has tape simulation, and it really does sound like a tape machine. I've recorded on tape machines uh, in the studios in Nashville and uh, multi-track, and then I've used tape myself in my studio. And, and this really does sound like a uh, like a tape machine. So, I mean, that's one of the things that I like about this. Okay, all right, so th that's done. I think what I'm gonna do, do next is the drums. Uh, Now this this uh, drum set that that I use in here, is um, is a set. It's called um, Mindset.
Okay. So, um, it has, a, I, I just, I just started using this and I like it because of the snare. It actually has two different snare things when you, it's one, it's the left hand and then the right hand is this, the uh, rim shot. So that's what I'm going to use. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do the drums. Whoops, I've got to pull out the... Uh, Okay, looks like I recorded over, uh, recorded something on that. I don't need that, so I'm going to delete that. Okay, I'm going to pull that. That's just a drum track that I always have standard in my my uh, template. I have a template uh, that I set up, so it's uh, cause, uh, the settings that I use, instruments that I use, are quite a bit the same, and I can always change that. But so I'm going to pull this. Up. I always like to turn it up. Uh, if you notice, I I don't I use the speakers all the time. I very rarely use headphones. Only if I'm going to use a mic and I'll, I'll do that. So, okay, I'm going to put a click on so I know when that's coming in. I think at the end of that, I did hold that. I wanted to hold, I think I held the bass. Okay, first, before I do that, I'm going to quantize the drums to sixteenths. And then I'm going to come in right there. I've got to change the MIDI to not merge it, but override it. So. Now I just finished that, so I'm gonna quantize that one. So it should be okay. I'm just gonna follow that B. 
baseline in just a little bit. something that wasn't quite right on the drum so I'm gonna check that out and see what happened there I think I'm just going to redo it. Sometimes fixing it takes longer. So I'm just going to punch in right there. That at least that's if there's something else then I'll, I'll fix it as I go but now I'm gonna move on to the piano what I use is the um, it's called the Ravel piano it's got some really um, cool things uh, you can do the settings what I've been kind of messing around with this because you can set the mic that's that's really close like like the mic's right on it I'm going to try moving it like the mic is moved away just a little bit. Kind of more, it picks up a little bit more of the acoustic sound. So now, okay, this is in C, so, so it goes in. that click again so I know when to come in I'm still a Okay, go back to the beginning of the piano track. I'll try one more time. Fear not and no who'll see 
there's some little uh, grace tones on in there, a little, a couple little, little flips. I can probably uh, redo those. Uh, I can quantize that, but uh, I did some little, uh, little things, and if I quantize it, it's gonna, it's gonna kind of mess that up. So, okay, now um, I think I'm gonna add some strings in there. Just, just for fillers, not ready to stand out. So, okay, I'm gonna pan this piano a little bit to the right. It's stereo, so I'm just bringing up the left channel so it kind of pans it over to the to the right side. Gonna put the strings at the beginning here. Like that. Came on to the tomb of Jesus. Okay, and probably not gonna bring them back in again till the chorus, maybe. Set fear not and no hope seeking for his Okay, I think I'll just bring them in right there again. Let's see, this is the first time I hit the chorus, maybe. Not. I think I'm going to wait till the second time the chorus comes in. I... Okay. So this is the intro, the verse, then this is where the chorus comes in. I think I'll put it in there just, and then if I want to take it out, I'll take it out. Okay. right there that's you can tell that's where his vocal starts the chorus okay I'll bring him in right there again
that. Okay, I don't need to quantize those either. Okay, now I'm gonna do the um, the guitar. I do that last. Uh, now I I mic the mic the guitar, mic the amp. I've got a, a Vox amp that I that I use and I have it mic'd up with a with a, a Lecture Voice RE20, and that's how I um, record the. Um, record the the amp. I've used amp simulators for a long time but uh, you know I got this uh, set up and I've got the sound that I like and so okay let's check it out and see how I think I'm gonna let the um, let the piano take it, and then I'll just do a little thing at the end. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit. Now the the speakers, I mean the speakers are on. The, I'm micing the amp, but it doesn't pick up very much at all, and that's why I do the the guitar last because if anything does pick up, uh, I'm not gonna change anything. If, if if I were to change the drums later. Uh, it would it would pick up and, and and you'd hear that you know Johnny Curtis used to always call that ghost tracks because it would uh, pick up uh, you know what we did before if we changed it it would pick up through the mic and you could still hear it in the background so that's why I do the guitar last because I'm using the mic so the the reverb is coming off of the the console uh, I put added the reverb on a console but the the sound is coming from the from the mic so I'm gonna do this again. Try it one more time. Just gonna come right on that. Came on to so that's all it's gonna be. Just check it out real quick here. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to go down and roll off down to 250. Because anything below that is going to interfere with the bass guitar. So that's what one of the things I always try to do. So you can hear it kind of a little bit in the background. Uh, but I'm going to I am going to bring up a little bit of 5K on this. Let's try that. Okay, okay, that'll work. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, I've got a set rub over. Came on to the okay, now again, this isn't going to come in. I don't think I'm going to bring this into the course. Just let the piano do the fills. That's mainly what all the instruments do is that they're just doing fills in between the vocal lines and try not to overlap with the vocal to um, you know to cover it up at all now i'm going to do the f uh, fills on the chorus hey. i think i'll do a little more of a lead in
I think that was I think that worked so I think that's it for the guitar um, I didn't hear any real mistakes that I don't want to change so it looks like I did that all in one see one of the things I do is like I try to kind of try to build it um, if you'll notice uh, the when we repeated the course then at the end then uh, see I, I try to alternate different instruments between um, the the process like the intro the intro has a lot of the fullness in it then it breaks down into the 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 verses so and then um the last chorus um uh, you know every i call it the kitchen sink just you know put all the parts in but they're all kind of doing the kind of background thing so that's why the guitar thing at the end was just doing a, a rhythmic so i'm going to take a listen it's almost almost done uh, i'm going to check the mix real quick hey. I think I'm still gonna compress it. That that one word is pretty quiet. I'm gonna beef up that input just a little bit again. Go back to the compressor. Came on to the tomb of Jesus. Yeah, I think that's going to be better. Try it again. They came on to the tomb of Jesus. The stone was moved. The Lord had gone away. Acoustic is really full. So I think I'll bring that up just a little bit. They came on to the tomb of so the acoustic and pianos. Okay, this is acoustic and the piano. See those none of those are are filling maybe the piano might have to be rolled off just a little bit but I think it's I think it's pretty close um, let's take a look I might have it rolled off already let's look at the input yeah I've got it rolled off just a little bit I think I rolled off just a little bit more to 100 because it does have some low frequencies that you don't want to lose came on to the tomb of Jesus
drums and the bass are have to be really tight and really uh, as far as the level. The what the uh, what the gu bass guitar does is mainly it, it gives pitch to the drums. So when it hits, you hear that initial hit of the of the drums. So, but the quantizing of, of Luna is 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 really nice. And so it keeps that bass guitar right on right right with the drums. So I think there wasn't any other drum things that that I heard as I was as I was doing that. And those little piano things that I heard, I don't know if you really hear. My, I'm going to listen to the beginning again. Uh, so for those verses so it'll kind of give us a little space here sound softer sound okay let's come off the intro again Uh, uh, API console emulation so every channel has has an EQ and input it's just like a recording console it's just set up all of that there's no I don't have to do plugins uh, I don't have to uh, change um, go to uh, a compressor or something else it's already in the channel that's what's in these API consoles and there's the um, the uh, the tape emulations on every channel. Okay, now on the go back to this setting. This is a summing summing uh, amp, so you can see it's the whole mix is kind of heavy. So I'm gonna bring it down. I can trim it down so it's not overloading because now it's gonna go into the compressor, the bus compressor, and now I'm gonna change it so I get not a whole lot of compression, just so it's taking off some edges. And uh, I've got a preset that I like to use here. It's called uh, Mix Buzz Glue. Right there. I used that like the, the second one. Kind of a little more little punch here. So now you can see it changed. There's a lot more compression on it. So I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. So it's like 3 or 4 dB compression. Okay, now we'll close that down. Now I'm gonna go back to the beginning and take a listen how the how it's affected the sound. Nice and smooth. At first, I thought that rim shot when I was doing it that the rim shot sounded kind of too loud, but but now it's in the mix and compressed. It sounds really nice, a nice little pop. It actually smooths out the vocal a little bit too. Okay, now now headed towards the final process of this, uh, I use ozone for uh, ozone 10 for the mastering, and so. Now we're gonna to go to the. They say because what it does, it listens to the whole, listens to the song, and makes uh, makes decisions on the imaging, on the compression, on the EQing, um, for uh, for um, for the style that it senses. Okay, and so I'm gonna to go to the loudest part of the song, that last chorus.
Okay, so now I'm going to pull this up. This is the mastering. I'm going to turn it on and it's it's going to wait for the audio to to make the decision. So here's going to play. It. So it's, it's listening to it, looking at the dynamics and the loudness of it. Now it's putting it all together, making the changes, making adjustments. Okay, it's done. So now I'm going to go see what it did. You can select different styles and it did sense that it was a folk a or country but I like that I'm gonna try the pop The pop is is what I've kind of what I've used throughout his his projects here, and so uh, I think I'm going to stick with that. Even though I I do like that that folk sound, and the but I think I've used the 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 pop setting through that. Okay, now I'm going to go back. Uh, and see what it did. And one of the things that I like to change, uh, I might not change it here. I like the more transient sound, so that's a little bit more of the punches come through. Okay, I think that I think that's it. Okay, now I'm gonna do is I've gotta do the fade here, that last note. So I'm gonna go down and start the fade right there. And then end it right about here. Yeah, okay, I think that will work. Okay, now I'm gonna end the project just a little bit after. Now, this is one of the things that I don't like about this versus a logic, because logic, I can just like drag it and keeps on dragging until, until it's over, but uh, Luna doesn't really do that yet, but you just have to minimize the, the screen and then drag it all the way over and then maximize it back out again, which is no big thing, but I wish they would change that. It's not, it doesn't waste a lot of time. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and take off that pre-roll and start to see how it sounds. I'm gonna go back to the console setting. for the level of the guitar make sure it's not too loud I think that's that's Until about I think the mix is about finished Now everything 
is in. Now the guitar is kind of doing, doing a fill. And the piano is still doing some fills, not really sticking out. Strings are in the background. Piano's taking over a little bit more of the fills, and the guitar just doing a rhythm now. There's a little one there. I don't, not really big, of a piano thing. Right there. Uh, is it worth? Take it out, might as well. Let's take a look at it. Let's see where it's at. Right there, you can see it. Happened right there, I think. It's a C, I guess it's okay. Take that out once. Yeah, I think that was it. Okay, I think this is done. Uh, so from beginning to the end, and uh, okay, now this we gotta. Okay, I've got to fix. I've got to uh, mix it down now. So now I've got to select the main output, go over to where I want it to save, and. Okay, I want to save it under his project. Okay, the songs, Amos. Okay, under gone. Oh, no, that's where I want to save the mix down. Got it selected and it's mixing. <clears throat> yeah, you know, the the, the process of, of going from the beginning to the end, um, a lot of the things, you know, that when I first hear the song, when I play the song, uh, I'll listen to it and uh, I'll, I'll start making, um, kind of making decisions in my in my head. Like I'll start thinking of what how I'm going to put, uh, put it together. So right away, as soon as I heard that, heard the song, I knew that I was going to put the, the piano, uh, you know, uh, as the intro and then for the verses and then the guitar will come in. So I had it already kind of in mind. So then I just got to lay them down. And uh, so, but it's, uh, I, I know what's going to go where, but I don't always know the exact notes, you know, uh, so those are kind of worked out. So sometimes in, in those cases, um, you know, I'll have to go over and over just to, to get what, I, what, um, what, you know, what, what was in my head, you know, uh, sometimes it, it's, uh, it takes a while to, to get that, that sound. Um, but um, the, the whole process, you know, is kind of developed through the years, you know, and uh, I have presets um, like uh, the the um, I have a template of all the instruments that I, that I use a lot, and I can bring in other instruments too if I want to, if I need to. I've got a, like a DX7 piano in here. I almost put that in, but um, 
and the strings are all, all set and kind of the levels are already set too so i just kind of focus on just just playing so that's that's kind of been a process but um okay now the song is done so now i'm going to take a look at at the wave file it's not just how it sounds but I, I, it's important how it looks in the wave file because you don't want it and i'll show you what i mean now i'm going to open it in uh audacity so i can see the whole waveform and um I like it. I like it's not. Sometimes it's sometimes uh, this program can really push it, and so it's uh, razored off like it's really pushy. No, no um, spaces at all. You want a little bit a little bit of um, space in there, so it's a little leaves a little bit of dynamics. I'm gonna play it through here and kind of just check the intro. Now this is the mixed version, the wave file, or. Okay, now I'm going to go to the end of that last chorus. I usually like to make it a lot more active and a lot more rhythmic things going on, but without interfering with the other instruments. So they're all kind of a little more energy built up at, at the end. So I think that's I think that's done. Um, the whole project is is finished from beginning to end. Now I'm going to go to um, back to the original email and his email set up there. So I'm going to drag it in there, load it up, and uh, as soon as it loads up, sent. Okay. And this project is done. Send an email from the beginning to the end. Uh, and I'll, I'll uh, post the uh, the time exact time it took to do this from the beginning to end. There was no edits, no stops or anything. It was from the beginning to the end. So hope you enjoyed that. We're going to be doing uh, a little bit more of this later on. So God bless you.